Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree to send what he is describing as peacekeeping troops into the separatist regions of Luhansk and Donetsk. The decision comes after Putin recognised both regions as independent states and described Ukraine as ancient Russian territory. The move could mark a significant escalation amid fears Russia could soon launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine and its allies have requested an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council to address the crisis. After a day of lashing out at NATO, Putin made an explosive announcement on state television. I think it is necessary to make a long overdue decision to immediately recognize the independence and sovereignty of the Donetsk People's Republic and the Luhansk People's Republic. With a few strokes of his pen, Russia's leader made a diplomatic solution to the Ukraine crisis seem even less likely. The decision could trigger massive consequences for his country. The EU's foreign policy chief had already said he was prepared to put a sanctions package to a vote in the European Council if Russia were to recognize the breakaway regions. After a crisis meeting in Washington, the White House announced sanctions against new investment, trade and financing in the two separatist regions. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson called Russia's decision a dark sign. Uh, this is plainly in breach of international law. It's a, a violation, a, a, a flagrant violation of the sovereignty and integrity of, the, uh, of, of Ukraine. Uh, it is a repudiation of the, uh, of the Minsk process and the Minsk agreements. And in Kiev, residents reacted with defiance to Putin's announcement. Why should Russia recognize it? If neighbors come to you and say this room will be ours, would you care about their opinion or not? It's your flat and it will always be your flat. Let them recognize whatever they want. But in my view, it can also provoke a war, because normal people will fight for their country. Let them recognize whatever they want, but we should not fall for it and react to this information. Let them do what they want, recognize someone, organize referendums, but we and the whole society don't recognize it and shouldn't recognize it. A day that had started with hopes of a summit in the near future between U.S. President Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin ended with a feeling that things are moving in the wrong direction. DW correspondent Nick Connolly is in Kiev for us. Vladimir Putin has ordered Russian soldiers to cross the border into Ukrainian territory. Nick, how is the Ukrainian government responding? Well, definitely this is an escalation that has come very fast. Um, as we just heard there uh, earlier on today, talk of new talks between foreign ministers, potentially a grand summit with Vladimir Putin, Macron and Biden. Um, now, within the space of a day, we have not only recognition of those self-proclaimed republics, but also that uh, order now before even that uh, recognition has been legally processed through Russia's parliament to send those troops in. The Ukrainians would say that Russia's troops have been in Donetsk and Luhansk since 2014, albeit um, with unmarked uniforms operating under that guise of those uh, self-proclaimed republics. Now they're coming in in Russian uniforms officially to uh, mark that recognition from Moscow. Increasing worry here that given that the situation along the front lines between Ukrainian troops and those Russian-backed separatists uh, and shelling and increasing deaths, that that could soon turn into a pretext for war if uh, Russia accuses Ukraine of shelling, of somehow causing damage to the civilian population. That could then seen, soon see Russian troops crossing over into government Ukraine-held territory. Um, You've got a much bigger region of Lugansk and Donetsk, much of which is still controlled by the Ukrainian military and the Ukrainian authorities. So worry there that this is not the end, but just the first step in this escalation. And is that being discussed openly now, Nick? Does Ukraine believe this is likely to be a deployment within these existing boundaries of the two so-called separatist states? Or will this serve as a pretext for a broader escalation? 
I think right now uh, the, it's the very brave analyst or pundit who will give you any conclusive uh, answer to that question. I think it's, it feels like all the answers, all the potential options are on the table. It was an extraordinary speech from Vladimir Putin, uh, full of grievance and uh, anger at what he said had happened to Russia, not only since the end of the Soviet Union, but even under communist rule, where he said basically Russia was uh, stolen from, was uh, robbed by the communists who gave territory and resources to the uh, Ukrainians, to Belarusians, to all the other minorities in that Soviet state, and that basically Russia was robbed of its historic lands. Uh, and he talked about Ukraine being basically a made-up country that had squandered what it was given from the Soviet Union. On the other hand, he said that Ukraine was dangerous, that it could potentially produce uh, nuclear weapons that would be a threat to Russia. So it was a rambling, pretty extraordinary speech that didn't seem to be aimed at convincing anyone outside Russia, certainly, but a, a sign of increasing frustration in the Kremlin and a desire to really try and roll back the, the, the order, the security order in Europe that has uh, been in place since the end of the Cold War. Nick, you've relayed to us many times over the last month how the people in Ukraine were remaining calm as these tensions mounted. What now? I think definitely people living in Donbass along those front lines, they've definitely seen an uptick in violence in the last few days, shelling on a scale that hasn't been seen since 2015. People have been left without electricity, without running water, and they're definitely now getting a lot more worried that that could uh, now translate into those Russian troops that are coming into separate held areas, coming also into government held territory in the next few days. You hear on social media from people there getting very nervous. Here in Kiev for now, I think it just all feels a bit unreal. Um, people just can't really believe that this is true. I think most people up till now have been trying to convince themselves that this is just a game of diplomatic poker, that this is a bluff, and that in the end this will all kind of basically go away without much change to their daily lives. But you've heard from people now when you speak to them that they are making preparations, people taking money out of banks, getting bags ready in case they need to go withdrawing cash. So definitely a sense that this crisis after months of diplomatic uh, you know, recriminations and headlines is now moving into a new phase. And Connolly in Kiev, many thanks. And now let's get the US reaction from Oliver Sallet in Washington, D.C. Oliver, what has been the response from the White House? Well, Anthony, President Biden just a little while ago got off the phone with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and French President Emmanuel Macron, and the three of them issued a joint statement where they strongly condemn Putin's recognition of the separatist areas. Uh, also, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, um, vowed, announced uh, some swift and firm, a swift and firm response of the United States. And a first set of sanctions has already been uh, announced. President Biden wants to sign an executive order banning U.S. persons um, investing in companies in, in the Donbass region, so in those separatist areas. So U.S. companies and persons are not allowed to invest uh, there anymore. Um, you know, essentially the White House is saying this, is, this comes as uh, they have uh, anticipated, as President Biden anticipated, that Putin was looking for a pretext for war and that he's now essentially moving in. And the concern is, of course, not only um, the situation in Ukraine, but also those uh, numerous troops that are currently stationed in Belarus, a country that shares borders with three NATO allies. So this is not only about Ukraine, this is about the broader security architecture of Europe. It's a bold escalation from Putin, but one Moscow had seemingly been planning for. What does US intelligence expect now will happen next? Well, the big question certainly is um, how far Russian troops and how far Russia will go. So is, are we going to see uh, Russians occupying the capital, Kyiv, or are we just going to see troops going into the separatist areas? And President Biden, one of his press conferences a little while ago when he misspoke, already gave some idea uh, on the possible outcome. So depending on the scale of the invasion, invasion we will see uh, either massive sanctions or uh, sanctions that are not so drastic, um, so to speak. So we are looking at a range from cutting off Russia from the financial system, like SWIFT, uh, that has been on the table. Of course, the uh, infamous pipeline from Russia to Germany, Nord Stream 2, um, is on the table. 
And then, of course, targeting Putin and other senior administration officials directly, like the European Union has already announced. So that would certainly be mm -hmm. a new level of sanctions that we haven't seen uh, before. And uh, it would be a blow to the Russian economy. However, it looks like Moscow is willing to pay that price. Oliver Sellard in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Well, European leaders are also preparing to take action. This is the latest from DW correspondent Christine Mwundwa in Brussels. Well, an EU official has said that the recognition of the independence of Luhansk and uh, Donetsk is just the first step uh, that they are expecting. Uh, this EU official said that there would likely be more steps. And so what the European Union has decided to do is to wait out and to see what next steps are taken uh, by the Kremlin before it reaches its conclusion about the exact uh, kind of sanctions that it is going to impose uh, on Moscow and on the separatists uh, in the region. You can almost be guaranteed that it's going to be a difficult conversation because there are some EU member states who are calling for sanctions to be imposed immediately. They were calling for this even before this development. They would have wanted to see that in response to what we've already seen happen on the ground and the fact that people in Ukraine are already being impacted by it, especially on an economic level. There will be some EU member states who will perhaps push for the continuation of diplomacy and hence perhaps softer sanctions uh, on this news. But again, it all depends on those next steps uh, that the European Union uh, is, 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 is anticipating. What happens after this declaration of independence uh, by the Russian President Vladimir Putin? And that will give a better indication as to the kind of response, the kind of sanctions that we will see. And perhaps if member states will come closer together on what is the severity that that reaction needs to be.